Well, welcome to Investor in the Family Radio, a podcast about learning to invest. My name is Brian Bain, and I'm your host. And this week, we're going to have a special treat as I'm going to start, I'm going to give a preview or a trailer, if you will, of some of the talks from next week's DIY Investing Summit. And so basically, each one of the, the real talks is going to be 45 minutes to an hour long, but I've taken different kind of s- simple highlight segments or excerpts from several of these interviews, and I'm going to be sharing them with you this week to give you a taste of what the summit's going to be all about. Every one of the uh, the segments you'll hear this week are all self-inclusive. You don't have to have the rest of the context to understand them. They all have their own value add in themselves, but they also give you a glimpse of, if you like this, imagine what the rest of the summit, the rest of the interview, and the rest of all the combined interviews in the summit may be to you. So again, visit DIYinvestingsummit.com, DIYinvestingsummit.com to get signed up. It's free for a limited time, so don't forget to go jump over there soon. And the summit officially starts Monday, January 23rd, so don't forget to sign up, DIYinvestingsummit.com, and hope you enjoyed today's preview for that summit. And today's special guest will be Jay Mintzmeyer. Okay, so let's shift a little bit more again, too. So if you had um, a national platform to give DIY investors your top three pieces of investing wisdom or advice, what would those be? <laughs> oh, man. A uh, national platform huh, for DIY investors. Yeah, I don't, know why, I don't know why I said national platform. It just seemed a little more... It seemed, more significant than me, kind of like state, uh, of, state of the state of the markets. It sounds fancy, right? No, it's just it was kind of funny. But I guess uh, actually, seeking off as a global platform, so I'm limiting you here. I don't know why I said right, it. Right, right. Yeah, I was like, "What are you talking about, man?" There's a lot of other people out there too, but uh, but no, I you know it's uh, man, it's it's one of those things where you know after and, and you know I I don't have I have a decade of experience basically in the markets, and you know there's there's people out there with far more experience, and you know the the more you invest and the more you trade, the more speculate, uh, you know, the more you realize, you know, that you're fallible, right. That you can make mistakes and then to not get too overconfident. So, um, I think my biggest, uh, my biggest piece of advice, uh, is to limit your allocation to speculative investments. I mean, we've already kind of touched on this, right. I've already kind of talked about how I keep, you know, over 60% of my money in, in these stable, you know, indexes and blue chips. Um, and, and my speculative holdings are usually 20, 25% of my portfolio. And also keep in mind that um, you know, compared to the average investor out there, I'm still I'm still fairly young. Um, I have a fairly high risk tolerance, right? Um, when when I see something that I really when I that I really think has good value, I'm willing to take a little bit more risk, right? And we talked about those huge allocations, right, to GMLP and now again to TK. Uh, so this is a guy, a younger guy, that's talking to you right now with a higher risk tolerance, and even I'm saying 20, 25 percent speculative. So I mean, you know, kind of put that in context, right? So if you're a, you're an older person, um, you know, it's all personal, right? And and it's one of those things where you know, don't ever let someone, you know, on the internet or you know, on the phone or anything like that, don't let them dictate your investment style, right? Uh, everyone needs to come up with their own kind of style. So don't don't take my twenty twenty five percent as like the Bible, right? Um, but just take that as as my general caution, right? Sure. So uh, so that'd be kind of point one, right? Limit your limit your allocation. Uh, my, my second point, it's, it's real simple. Uh, never, ever, ever invest with money that you think you're going to need or that you really want to spend in the next like three to five years. I mean, you're going to go in and invest, especially in speculative stuff. You're going to go in and buy these kind of stocks and you think you need that money in like a year for like a down payment for a house or you really need to get a new car or I don't know, you have kids that are getting married or going to college. Eh, it's probably need to steer away from speculative investments. And maybe even maybe just put your money in like a money market fund or something if you think you're going to need that money. Uh, it's just a recipe for disaster. And you know the third point, and this is just the hardest one. Uh, yeah, I'm still working on this, uh, you know, on a, on a daily basis, literally. Uh, even I even just had some issues with this recently with some trading. But you try to limit your emotions as best as possible, right? I mean, you got to buy. Uh, well, in my style, at least, you got to buy based on fundamental facts, right? Don't buy because there's an uptrend, or don't buy because your friend's buying, or you know that kind of stuff. Buy because you believe in the story, right? Buy because the fundamentals back it up, because the earnings are good, because the cash flow is good, uh, because the forward projections are good. And then if that story changes, right? If you said you know growth is going to you know go up thirty percent next year because of X, Y, and Z, and and that doesn't happen, then that's okay, right? That we make mistakes, but sell. You know, don't sit around and don't sit around and pray and hope and dream that, you know, somehow you're going to get lucky. Right. I mean, we make mistakes and the best of us own up immediately and we sell, we get out. Um, but if the price drops, on the other hand, but the fundamentals are intact, right, like like the price just drops because people are more pessimistic or the price just drops because the market itself is down, um, but the company itself is still doing fine, then don't panic. Right. 
look at the story, right? If the story is the same, then don't panic. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't necessarily say add more money or double down or anything like that. Um, but just remember that you bought for the fundamentals, right? Remember why you bought. Try to keep those emotions out of it. Not consider the economic status or risk profile of any specific person. The information and opinions expressed should not be construed as investment trading advice and does not constitute an offer or an invitation to make an offer to buy and sell securities.